I told myself I would do a better job of recording. However, I'm not at my home studio. Um, I did want to be at my home studio for this Lex chat, but until I get a more set date on when I will be recording the Lex chats, then uh, this is going to have to work for now. Um, I did release a like an official YouTube video, which I hadn't done in a very long time. It's called The History of Song Covers, The History of Cover Songs. And the audio on that was very nice. And I used a microphone for that and edited the sound in Pro Tools because that's what I work in. And it sounded really good. So I want to, you know, once I get in my home studio, have the microphone and be recording the sound while I'm doing these live Lex chats. So the sound will at least be very, very clean, even if sometimes the audio messes up. Because I actually have um, a lot of issues with the sound not working sometimes when I'm trying to download the video from Instagram. So I, I just got to find a new way of streaming so I can get the live interaction with everybody, but also get good sound quality for me to have a, a bachelor's in audio production. I need my sound to be better. What's up everybody on you? Jewelry says you're looking really good. Lex. Thank you. Thank you very much. And how are you doing? Travis says, Hey, big hit. Hey, big hit. What's up, Stink? Um, so yeah, today's Lex chat is going to be very short. And I'm going to see... You got a badass voice. Thank you. You mean my speaking voice? Or do you mean my singing voice or my rapping voice? I have so many voices. Or do you mean my Michael Jackson voice? What's this fit you got on? It looks like it might it might be nice. That's from Trey Vic. I'm so glad you asked. I got this from, let me see. God, you can see my abs. That's beautiful. What's up? What's up, Will? I look thick in these too. Okay. So I actually did, if any of you have been tuning into my YouTube, and I have these shoes as well. So they're really cute. I'm feeling cute today because I got my nails done. But if y'all have been watching my YouTube, I got back into the beauty thing where Trevick says, yes, thick and awesome. Thank you. I've been working on my thickness by going to the gym. On You Jewelry says, that's beautiful. Thank you. If y'all have been paying attention to my YouTube channel the past couple of weeks, I actually finally got back into doing beauty videos. It's something that I wanted to do, but honestly, I had to get my money right. Um, I wasn't able to keep like a consistent cash flow for me to be able to buy new outfits, new performance outfits for shows that come up. But now I kind of have a system worked out to where I can have a little bit of money set aside at least once a month to go shopping. So I did a beauty review for the first time in probably a year at least. It's called shopakira.com, try on for upcoming shows in Atlanta. I actually wore this outfit to a show at a pop-up playlist party, which, is this really me or is this the filter? No, that's me. That's definitely me. Ooh. I'm not trying to flash y'all, I'm sorry. <laughs> Boobs coming in hot. But yeah, so I do a review of this outfit and I actually give like a full jewelry look these are one of the bracelets I wore. I actually had a bracelet set, um, one for the left side, one for the right side that I wore. And then I had dangly earrings. I had some jewelry around my neck as well. Um, but I basically wore this exact outfit for the show that I did with Mark Dub and the Randoms, the band, um, for a pop-up playlist party out here in Atlanta. That was on the 26th of May. Um, I will have some videos coming out shortly of that. I want to, I'm going to be doing reviews of my performances. So, yeah. So this is the review that I did. I kind of have like my home set up, you know, at home. So I want to get a better backdrop, of course. And I really want to do something with my floors now that I see the video. But yeah, so I reviewed this outfit 
And then there's also an outfit that I wore for the show that I did at Fox Phase 2, which was the Sorry for the Wait show. Super cute. I love this outfit. There's that drip top detail. I call it a drip top because it's got all the little crystals, but it's like a see-through mesh. And yeah, it's just really cute. And the girl from Akira, she helped me pick out these looks. I wore these shorts. It looks like a skirt, but they're frilly enough and they like move around enough that it looks like a skirt. So really exciting. And like I said, I finally have like a little system where I have money set aside to be able to pay for new outfits to buy when I have performances. So that's really exciting. Um, those shows went really well. Like I said, I'm going to post those videos soon to my YouTube. So make sure you stay tuned. If you are a patron, then you are going to be seeing those way before the general public. So yes, Trey Vic, this is a squirt. And yeah, um, if you want to pay attention to, if you want to be notified or pay attention to like what upcoming shows I have, then you can just go to my website, LexiATL.com, or you can use the link in my bio. I think I'm going to keep it the Bands in Town link because um, that shows like a rundown. So like the next thing I have on my calendar, if you want to come out and see me, it's a good way. If you want to stalk me, then use that link, the Bands in Town link or my website, www.lexiatl. Um, the next thing that I have coming up is a fashion show this Sunday, which is the Midsummer Dream Fashion Show. It's going to be at a place called The Bakery. And I believe that address is 1500 Southland Circle. Hold on. The Bakery Cowork. Super girly space. It's at 1500 Southland Circle Northwest in Atlanta, Georgia, 3031 eight so if you are interested in fashion and you want to see some designers in atlanta then i would encourage you to come out to the show i want to say early bird tickets are 30 dollars, and i want to say it's like 50 or 60 at the door so if you want to come out to the fashion show that is this sunday june 5th from three to five at the bakery co-work that's 1500 southland circle northwest atlanta georgia 30318 uh basically I would say that is around Bishop Street? No. Where is that? Maybe it's not far from like Icon or Collab or um, Street Execs area. It's not far from there if you live in Atlanta. And then I do have another show coming up July 2nd with Game Changers Radio. That's going to be in Albany, Georgia. Um, eventually, I would love to get groups together to come travel because I'm literally always going to these things by myself and I keep having people asking me like you know Lexi you never have anyone come on these on these trips with you I'm like yeah the thing that kind of sucks about having all of my friends or all of my associates in music or in entrepreneurship is the fact that we're always literally always working we're always literally always working that was a lot we're literally always working and we're, I think we all suffer the same kind of trauma. We're afraid we don't know when the next paycheck is going to come. So we just take every job we can and we don't really give ourselves a day off unless we're burnt out. But people aren't ever tired of working like when I have an event, you know what I mean? So it's just very interesting. That's all. So yeah, if you want to keep up with what shows and events I have coming up, either events that I'll be featured in or shows that I'll be performing at, then highly recommend that you follow um, my Bands in Town link. But the easiest way is just check into my website, www.lexiatl, whenever you can. Let's see. Key on the sand. One of your producers and I are working a new beat for you right now. Really? Very excited to work with you soon and to see what we all can do together. Which producer are you working with? Great Keys? I feel like it's Great Keys. Um, Larry Nolan 2 says, you ever do an acoustic set? No, but someone did ask me about doing an acoustic set. Um, gosh, I think his name is Nick. He's the bass player in Mark Dub's band, The Randoms. He was asking me about doing an acoustic performance. I really want to, I just have to figure out which song of mine to do 
and acoustic. Hey, Maurice. Hell yeah. Hell yes. Ooh, and I'm about to be selling hella beats for y'all too. I got um, a couple gospel artists on my roster. And they're serious about getting songs written and getting mixing and mastering. And then they work with my man Rodney across the hallway. And we're, he's going to get them distributed and marketed. And it's just, it's really good. It's a really good day. So um, let me know what y'all want to chat about. And if anybody has any songs that they would like me to review here live on my Lex chat, then be sure to send your $10 to Lexi ATL. That's cash symbol L-E-X-C ATL. And I will review your song live yes that is a new segment that i'm going to be starting it's called lex rated shout out to jamal mccoy for sending 20 dollars for just for support i believe in you y'all are gonna make me cry uh if y'all knew how hard if y'all knew how hard this journey is man thank you Thank you, thank you, thank you. Shout out to Jamal McCoy. I, I saw the cash app just came through for $20. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, if Jamal, who is Jamal? Is Jamal watching right now? You got some music you want reviewed? You want a couple songs reviewed? Or would you like me to send you a poster? I have Lexi posters. I have, oh, your last name is McCoy. <laughs> oh gosh, you already have a poster and some wristbands. And you bought a lighter, even though you said you don't smoke. Thank you. Oh my God, thank you. So I guess we can do um, a Q&A for Lex Chat today and I'll sprinkle in some song reviews depending on, you know, who sends through Cash Apps. And you can either send that to have your song reviewed or you can send money and I'll send you some merchandise because I do have Lexi posters. I see that uh, we have a question. Official Mr. Flat Shoals. Damn, the whole government. I didn't know your last name was McCoy. I did not know. I'm so sorry. I apologize. Let me see. But yeah, if y'all just knew how freaking difficult this journey can be. Let me show y'all. I'm going to do a quick advertisement. Uh, so I did my taxes this year. And lo and behold, I have promotional material that I can share with y'all. So I have these posters going for $10. Of course, um, shipping is looking like 5 to $10. So you might pay like 18 and some change if you order this poster online. If you come out to the show, if you come out to the shows and it's $10 flat, plus you get it signed, all of the posters are going to be signed. But if you come to the show, you get a personalized message signed onto the poster. So we have that one. We have this poster, which is very artistic. It's very uh, classy. The other ones are my video vixen type posters. So, you know, just like back in the day when you used to get like Vibe or Source magazine and your favorite celebrity was on the spread of the magazine, like that centerfold, we got them type pictures. So $10, these are the posters that I have. And then I have wristbands as well. I posted them on my website the wristbands and the lighters. However, I don't think I have pictures. So let me just show a video. Put that bitch on the yeah. Boom. Yeah. I got winner hats. I got wristbands. I got lighters now. So if you smoking, if you drinking, I got lighters. Oh, what am I doing? I have some of these. Well, I have a lighter on me right now. Somewhere, somewhere, y'all bear with me. I was not expecting to do this right here, you did me. But dang, where my light is at, shawty? 
Put your lighters up. I'm gonna do a quick little ad of that. Oh my God. Y'all don't mind this. That was my peacemaker. Here we go. Lexi Burn Lighters. These are $3. So I don't know if that's gonna focus, but it says burn. Years ago, um, my second single that I ever released was called Burn and I always wanted to put out some lighters, but I never had the money back then because I was a broke college student. But look at that strong flame. I was Joan of Arc in my former life coming to America. If y'all didn't know that reference, what are you doing? But these are $3. So um, yeah, I have those. Wristbands are $2. The hats, the winter sun visors that you saw, those, were, those are $15. The posters are 10 And yeah. Let's see. So let's get into some questions. If y'all have questions, and please feel free to ask. This Lex chat is going to be short. It's going to be a general conversation. So yeah, the real eyes says, why do certain studios have a bad vibe or bad attitudes? Why do certain studios have bad vibes or bad attitudes? I've actually heard this come up a few times. Um, and it's mostly in regards to the engineers that work at the studios where people say the engineer is not as engaged or the engineer is just there clicking on buttons or the engineer just doesn't seem, hey, I got a dollar, or the engineer just doesn't seem into it. And I have a couple of thoughts on this for me. I have been the engineer that offers my advice or my critique without it ever having been asked for. And that rubs some artists the wrong way. I know for me, it would rub me as an artist the wrong way because I already know exactly what I want to do for my music. I don't want someone trying to tell me what to do. Um, so it can throw off the vibe when you offer criticism or advice and the artist is not asking for it. On the opposite side, there are artists who want you to give advice and critique, but I personally would like for the artist to tell me explicitly, tell me outright, tell me upfront, hey, if something's not sounding right, if it doesn't sound like I'm doing something properly, then let me know, make me do it over. I might get upset, but make me do it over until we get it right. Make sure it sounds good. Make sure I'm delivering the best possible performance that I can. Because when you think about it, the major difference between recording in the studio and recording live or performing live on stage, they're both performances, but they're two different type of performances, right? So obviously live, live means you have to capture perfection or close to perfection in the moment because you only have right now, you only have this moment. But when you're in the studio, you have however much time you booked to create perfection to do it as many times as you want until you get perfection so that's the major difference between a live performance and a studio performance studio you can do as many takes as you want um to get it right and artists want to get the best at least the serious artists do so some studios might have an attitude it, it might seem that way because the engineers are not great but um, I would encourage artists to take charge of the session. You paid for it, so that's your time. Just let the engineer know that you want that critique, you want that feedback. Um, as far as vibes, I can tell you, and this is not to talk crap, this is just facts, right? The studio I'm at right now, it's looked the same since I've been here in 2016. That's six years now, four plus two, yeah. It's six years and this, the most we've done is give it a new paint of coat in the hallways. So as far as vibe, the reason why the vibe sucks in a lot of studios is because, and I hear this across many different studios, engineers that I know who walk across, who work across different studios, it's because the owners don't really want to spend money on upgrades, whether that be cosmetic for how the building looks or shoot, even with the equipment, y'all, we have to put in multiple requests to get certain equipment replaced or sent in for repair and maintenance. So that can really kill the vibe um so those might be a few reasons why studios might have bad vibes or bad attitudes other than that what kind of experiences have you had where the studio had bad vibes or the people at the studio had bad attitudes because it could also be people weren't trained properly or maybe honestly people were just tired 
I try not to be disrespectful when I'm tired, but I can be a little bit irritable when I'm tired. Kian on the sand says, keep killing shit. We'll be in touch. We'll send the beat out in the next week or so. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Larry Nolan, too, says, check your app. I think you mean cash app. Let me refresh this. Since I'm on my phone, I'm not able to see it. <clears throat> Since I'm on live, I mean, on my phone, I'm not able to see it. So I have my email pulled up so I can see it. Mm, oh, that's your last name, Nolan. I've been saying like Nolan's like Nolan. Larry Nolan, too. Like you from Nola. You feel me? Like they don't talk like that in New Orleans. I really appreciate you sending that money over. You heard me. I really appreciate you, baby. That shit real. I really like that. Like people really showing their support and they sending in the cash ship. And I really appreciate it because y'all know it's hard to be. It's hard to be an artist out here. People don't really support the people like you want them to. So I really appreciate when people show me support on the cash apps, baby. Thank you so much, baby. Thank you. Just because your last name is Nolan. It reminds me of Nolan's Nola what's up maurice maurice beats asks how do you stack your backgrounds i love how you stack your backgrounds how do you stack your backgrounds what up black what up benjamin button so the way that i stack my backgrounds uh i'll be honest like six months ago i was experimenting with not stacking as much and i was doing two stacks of each harmony so if you don't know what a harmony is a harmony is if I'm speaking like this, this is my melody, this is my lead. But if I go, hi, 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 hi. Those things that are above or below the center point, those are harmonies. So, hi, hi, I might stack that two times. That's what I did like six months ago. But I've currently, I've recently realized that I actually way i enjoy my stacks i enjoy my songs way more when i'm doing four stacks of backgrounds so i will have one harmony hi 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 stack it four times and then i pan them so let's say i got four right i'll have two on each side let's say if okay so sound is like on a 180 degree plane which means like a flat straight line so but you don't want it to just be here. You got to fill in everything in between, right? And then it becomes the full spectrum of a 180. So let's say that your voice is center, phantom center. It's not really center, but it sounds like it's in the center. I will have two on each side, right? Let's say I have mid harmonies, which are basically like, it might be stacking my lead. So my lead is in the middle. I'll have two, maybe pan 30, 30, and then I'll pan the other two, 60, 60. Let's say I have um, a high harmony. I'll have my lead. I got my mids here and here. I might place my highs on left and right. 35, 70, left and right, left and right. And then I'll have some lows. Let's say that I put that at 40, left and right, 80, left and right. And then if I have like anything else, I'll just fill in that 180 spectrum of sound. So that's kind of like a scientific way to look at it. That's how I stack my backgrounds. And I have to give a shout out to French Spencer, one of my professors from the Art Institute of Atlanta. He actually had me doing four stacks on things. And I just, I always stuck with it because I feel like it makes my, my song sound bigger when I do stack things. So the real eyes going back to his question, why do some studios have bad vibes or bad attitudes? says personally me i record a lot in houston at this studio and the people at the studio would either ignore me or don't say hello when i walk in etc i just peep bs overall oh and i have to ask unfortunately is this a black owned studio was it a white owned studio i have found although studios that i've been going to lately are way more quality but i guess it depends on the price too the, the studios who charge higher prices out here in Atlanta, I find that they have better customer service, but they also have stricter rules when it comes to how you book, how much time you book, the minimum that you're booking. You're either paying in, for, no, the high end uh, studios, we have a minimum of three hours or four hours and you will pay for your three hours or your four hours up front. If you cancel on the day of, you don't get your money back. 
Um, if you cancel 24 hours in advance, you get half of your money, maybe. We still need to pay our engineers. So like, I find that when a studio charges more, the customer service is better. It's usually cleaner. The people are usually nicer. There's usually like a system put into place. Um, like this one studio I went to called Low Key Recording Studios out here. They handle all their booking through Acuity. And it's like an automatic thing. It's very professional. You choose the time, you choose the room. All of the all the prices are you know listed in a way that's really easy to understand. And you book the room you want with or without an engineer. You pay for it up front right then and there. And then you get a confirmation email. And then if it's like weird hours, like one time I booked midnight to 6 a.m. And the owner was like, hey, we saw that you just booked this time. Did you mean midnight or did you mean 12 o'clock noon tomorrow? And I was like, oh, no, we, we meant midnight. The artist, he likes to work really late hours. He was like, OK, just wanted to confirm. We got your payment. Everything's all good. So we'll see you at midnight. And it was just like, you know, super professional and very much on the ball. You know what I mean? Maurice B says the bad vibes I had when the creative is off. You mean when the artist is off? Yeah. I always tell people that damn they were rude at the white studio that's crazy all the white studios i've been to they are so hospitable out here they're just easy going white dudes mm, most of them look like hippies um but yeah anytime i've had a bad vibe in a session i like to tell artists that you're paying for the session so you are the leader of the session um i'm going to match your energy so if the if the artist's vibe is off then i'm gonna match your energy if you don't want to give me the best, then I'm just here to press buttons. If you don't want me to critique you, I'll, of course, I'll make sure you have good sound recording quality, but I'm just pushing buttons. If you like it, I love it type thing. It really just depends on how the artist is interacting with me. I'll have artists who come in and right off the gate, like they like, hey, I've had bad experiences with engineers, so I just want to let you know up front, you know, if I'm not doing anything right, then let me know. I'll redo it. Just tell me what I'm doing wrong. I really just want to make sure I get the best. And I love working with artists like that because they understand that someone outside of themselves is hearing something different from them. Um, but they're telling me that they trust me to get them the best sound. And when an artist opens up to me and tells me something like that, then that's when I can really lock in with an artist. But if I have an artist who they don't really want the critique, which I understand because I'm an artist myself, but it's one thing to not want my critique. It's another to not know how to communicate with me. And the most annoying clients for me are the rappers who just started rapping less than a year ago. They come in and they don't know the lingo. I'm trying to teach them along the way, but they like refuse to use it. Um, they got broken English. <sighs> how you... Uh